What is happening, Budge Builders, and welcome back to the channel. We recently were going through an estate auction and purchased this 1961 Ford Galaxy Starliner. This car was actually pulled in a barn here in 1998 and parked and has not been run since. They did pull it out here for the auction. It is a 394 barrel. In today's video, we're going to try to get it running for the first time in 24 years. So I am on my phone here with Dad, and we are watching an estate auction with a bunch of barn find. Look at these things, pulled straight out of the barn. Stuff that's sitting around. Bunch of cool cars though, a bunch of Model Ts, a couple Volkswagens. I don't know if this is focusing or not, hopefully. All right? Yeah, all right, I bid. <laughs> Down to 50 seconds. Come on, baby. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Yes. All right, 850 bucks. No, somebody bid oh, again. We're at what six. do you think about that 61? I don't, I don't know, Dad. That's, it's only $1,000, but I mean, when we're looking at a few cars, that adds up. <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. Bought a Falcon. 650 bucks. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, bought a we got 61 Galaxy 2. It's 6.30 in the morning and it is time to head out. I've got my friend John's trailer that he thankfully let me borrow behind my truck and dad has our trailer. Let's go pick these two cars up. It's, it's a Lenore, North Carolina, so not too far of a drive, but it'll be a fun trip. It's a big block. Now, obviously it could potentially be a 352, but according to the ad where we purchased it, and we'll check numbers. Hopefully it is actually a 394 barrel. See those Thunderbird valve covers? Oh look, chicken eggs and a golf ball. It really did take some motivating to be able to get that rear brake free. I'm a... Even dragging it up on there, about pulling the treads off the tire, it did not free it up and we had to end up breaking that drum to get it off sometimes that's just what you have to do normally those are 50 to 70 dollars so not a big deal to replace but we've got it out here man what a cool cool land yacht of a car it is super solid up underneath we were looking at it while we had it on the trailer and it is a solid solid car now one thing that's really cool and we barely ever have this check that out keys one of the first things you know we have to check we've seen in the interior what's cool is we do have one original i guess it may not be original we have a skirt that's gonna look so cool on this car 
hopefully the other one's in the trunk. I'm not sure what's in there. The front seat's up a little bit, but you can't tell what's in here. We do have keys, but... Man. Didn't go all the way down. Let's try to blow some air in it, maybe. Oh, haha, <laughs> it went all the way in. Maybe. Let's try. You ready? Well, okay. it's got a spare in it. Bunch of mess. Wow, look how. Look how solid this car is. It's got some moisture in it, but I don't. Yeah, there's some soft. Not bad, though. Wow. Look how, it's how solid it is around the hole. Yeah, this corner's been replaced. It's got one steel wheeler you can use. Need more. Dad found some 1991 newspapers in the trunk. So I wonder, the registration says 1998, it says expire 6 of 98. Maybe these are 10 year or registrations or something. It does have this. I wonder what the date is on that. It says 3-1. Yeah, look at that interior. It's because it had seat covers on it. That's the original interior. Back's a little rough in the back. Headliner's coming down. Not bad though. 54,000 miles. That says, I think it says 91. It says something one. I'm showing 55, 8, 12. I'm not sure. We at least know it hadn't been driven since 98. Been on the road, so. Let's take a look, see, and see what we're working with. I did verify on the data tag, it is a Z code 394 barrel. So this is 300, about 300 horsepower is what they came with from the factory. Before we even start messing with anything, we probably need to come in here and let's vacuum all these eggshells up and all this other trash out from this engine bay so we don't have it going everywhere. It's still there. Motorcraft. Let's see what our oil looks like. Old Penn's oil filter. Last oil change on this was 1991 at 52,000 miles. It's showing 55. As original as the interior is, as straight and original as the car is, and as solid as it is, I doubt that's anything but original mileage. It is a little low. But, old, but no water, so that's good. Suppose we can take a look now, and let's go ahead and see what our cylinders look like. Well, that just fell off of there. I think these might even be the original spark plug wires. Probably not. Oh. Oh. Fire. Oh. Okay. Ow. Okay. That's the one that works up and down. No moisture. That is a old plug. It's an auto light, which is not original, but it says resistor 45. I haven't seen a spark plug. 
ever this is resistor 45s. Everything now is coded that way so you know. Come on, come on, baby, come on, baby. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> okay. Problem. Another clean spark plug. When I say clean, I just mean moisture free. Another pretty clean spark plug other than gunk that came off while it came up. Most everything looking pretty good so far. Let's soak these cylinders down. Now we've let it soak for a couple hours because we had very light moisture signs. I think we're gonna go ahead and try to rock on it just a little bit. I'm not gonna throw a battery in it, not gonna try to hit with the starter because we, if we do have stuck rings, I don't wanna be ripping rings off. And so we'll get a ratchet in there and let's see if we can kind of tug on it and rock it a little bit. Fingers crossed, this thing's free. There's in the bolt. Oh boy. Tightening the bolt. Yep, yeah, tightening the bolt. So it is stuck. I think we should put it in gear or maybe kind of roll it a little bit and let the clutch out if the clutch functions. Because I don't know, maybe it's something in the drivetrain or something as clean as this is. It shouldn't be that stuck, I don't think. What do you think? Alright, let's rock it around a little bit. You want to throw it in third gear maybe? Now this is a three on the tree, which is kind of cool. Probably better than an automatic, quite honestly, especially with something like that. of this age that sat this long. Oh yeah. Huh? Oh yeah. It, it didn't take much. I think it's just barely stuck. Let's let it soak a little bit longer, but yeah, it's, it's rocking a little bit. We've let it soak for a couple more hours and it's really hot. We want to head home, but before we head home, let's rock it just a little bit more. Like I said, we don't want to tear anything up, of course. It may even be accessories. The pulleys are, so oh my goodness. You realize this generator's just hanging here? There ain't no bolt in it. <laughs> <laughs> so we might even have an accessory frozen. If you notice right here, the generator is just hanging, but that belt is rusted to the pulley. And so this one could be the same. This power steering could be locked up and that generator may be locked up. So we're gonna go ahead and cut both of these belts, verify that's out of the way, and then we'll rock it a bit more. Well, that's not locked up. Wow, it was rusted, rusted on there though, really tight. So maybe, see all that rust? All that rust. Sometimes these can act locked up because that belt binds on itself. So maybe that's all it was. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, the starter's engaged. You hear it? Yeah. Starter's engaged. So we, what we did is it was stuck this direction, we kicked it back the other way and it released the starter. Okay, I think our, our problem here was actually, you can hear the starter winding. So I think what it is, this should have a pull style bendix. So when the starter clicks, it actually pulls the bendix in and it sounded like it was bound in. So we went one direction and it was like it was locked up. We went the other direction and it released that bending. So I think that may be all we had going on there. Now, before we go any farther, I think that it's gonna wrap it up for the day. But tomorrow, first thing we're gonna do, let's drain that oil, let's change that filter. Before we even start turning this thing over, I know it's good to sometimes go through and run these and churn everything up. But at the same time, oil's $15. Let's throw fresh oil on this thing. We can run it a little bit once we get it running, if it'll run. And then we'll change it. But to begin with, let's drop that oil, let's pull that filter, let's get it changed. <sighs> Knew that wouldn't happen. <laughs> what is it? I just tried My grabbing hand. the filter. Uh -huh. My hand. Let's get the oil out of here first. Ow, my punched the floor. Hopefully no sludge. No sludge though. No metal at all on the magnet. That is good. So that last oil change that said 1991, 
matched was pins oil and it's got a pins oil filter in it so i'm guessing that was the last time the oil was changed oh boy Oil filter housing is absolutely clean as a pin. So I'd say the mileage is probably correct. And it was probably fairly well taken care of. Because wow, is that clean. Some chunky gunk and rust around the outside, but the inside looks really good. And no moisture or rust or anything that we can see or sludge in our oil. So that is good. Fresh Motorcraft FL1A that we have pre-lubed. Of course, I always like to run a high zinc additive in here. And then this motor takes six quarts with a filter change. And so we've got six quarts of 10W40, just old standard oil. With five and a half in, we're looking pretty good for initial turnover. I'm sure once we get it fired off, it will top that filter off too. And we'll put the rest in. As cheap as they are, I don't think there's any point in not replacing this old starter solenoid. I have new cables because this thing is crazy long and it has the original ground on it. And I'd say we probably want to replace that. I'm sure you probably did notice your, so one of these is your signal. The other one is a little 12 volt jumper that's actually for your coil there or actually for your coil. So when you're turning it over, it gives like a little extra power output to help start it. These are off, and with the starter making that funny sound, acting like it was locked up to begin with, I bet something's going on there. We'll have to find out. Hopefully that starter is not bad, because that might be a difficult one to get a hold of. It's kind of cool. It's a little factory brown one. Mm. With our new solenoid installed, we've got a battery stuck down in here, our new cables. We'll see what power does to this car. No sparking. Oh my goodness. That's a good sign. When's the last time you saw an interior light come on in a car? Ah. Wow, this thing smells like pee so bad. And I'm gonna sit in that seat. <laughs> okay, you ready? Oh yeah. This thing stinks, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That's why you're in it and I'm not. <laughs> oh cool. Oil, gin. I'm gonna try to bump it. What do you think? Oh. <laughs> Spinning the motor over? Yeah. Heck yeah. That is a noisy starter. Of course it doesn't have dash lights. Nothing ever has dash lights. Headlights or tail lights? Oh yeah. Lights are reflecting in the gremlin. Hey. I'll laugh till you break. Oh what good looking. Break, hit a break. Woo! Look at that. Do they work? Yeah. I'm surprised a lot of the electronics, I don't know if these are called electronics. What is this? What uh, The power in this car surprisingly works and we're actually spinning over. The starter sounds really odd and it's probably just that straight gear drive starter, but I bet that Bendix is shot. The starter works though, so we may have to fender it, figure out that Bendix, but for the time being, let's go ahead and start figuring out this ignition system. See if we can get some fire to it. Maybe we'll put plugs back in it, see if we get this thing to fire off. Those look like the original spark plug wires. Not bad. Is this the original cap, Fomico? It looks good though. Yeah, it doesn't look that good. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to clean it up a little bit. It's had points and condensers. That's a really old condenser though. Eklund? Huh. Definitely not something that's been done any time recently. Those points are nasty. We can try to clean them, but it's easy enough. Let's just throw a new set of points in there. I'm gonna leave that condenser because as you know, a lot of times it's got the big wire, so it's probably a heavy duty condenser, which is what we would put in it anyways. Most of your new cond newer condensers are terrible quality, but the points, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Let's throw a new set in there real quick. No point even fooling with cleaning it. They're $5. And then we'll make sure to grease this point here where it rides 
and we will also grease the lobe here. And we're right on the lobe. Oh wow, so those points were not even set. The heck? And we're going to be setting these points to 17 thousandths. Now I'm going to turn it over and let's see if we get some popping action here. That'll tell us we have good power and we have a good condenser. Good. We're not only popping good there, go ahead. We have plenty of fire popping strong there and there. Now we'll be installing, of course, a new set of Motorcraft spark plugs. It did have auto lights in it, which work, but we like to put the factory ones in there. And we'll just verify that they are 34 thousandths gap. Wow, those are my mm -hmm. worn slap out. Might as well go ahead and disconnect this fuel line, which there's not much left of it. Nothing. Maybe it was ran dry. That, uh, that doesn't seem right. While I was down here with the fuel pump, I did notice that water pump is shot. So I wonder if someone was starting to mess with the water pump. Had the belts on it though. That doesn't look like it was messed with. Maybe it just came loose. Maybe that's why it was parked. Got our handy dandy boat tank. Run to our electric fuel pump to the carburetor. I am almost positive we're probably gonna have to rebuild this carburetor, but I can't help but give it a try. If it doesn't overflow, it'll probably at least need an accelerator pump. I think it might hold. I think this old Motocraft four barrel may hold. Well, Dad, what you think? Yep, let's give her a try. Let's see what it does. Think. Oh. oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> oh. Is this thing gonna idle? It's got an ugly, is it got a low pressure? Oh, cut the wiper, cut the wiper, cut the wiper! Oh, no, no, Kia, Kia. Does it have oil pressure? Light went off. I think it does. And the generator, it might be solid liquor, but I think the hypo is solid liquor. This thing's flipping idling. Oh. That is. <laughs> Wow, it's smoky in here. <laughs> I want to verify oil pressure. Cut it off, please. <laughs> Those lifters may just need some run time. They are noisy. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> it's the sweet smell of... of bleh. It's the sweet smell of success. <laughs> this thing just cranked, started up and idled. You know, as dry as that fuel line was, I wonder if this thing was run out of gas before it was parked. Oh wait, 
with the fuel pump loose, maybe this thing actually was run out of gas before it was parked. Quite literally. <laughs> what? Some weird stuff going on there, most definitely. But hey, wow, this one wants to live. It is noisy. That is some noisy lifters. Yeah. Let's put a little water in it. Uh, let's put some belts back on. Let's put some water in it so we can get some more runtime. What do you think? Tad is going to start figuring out getting our bolts back in there. While he does that, I'm going to pull this valve cover and let's verify we have oil coming to the top end. Sometimes it just takes a little run time to get those lifters to liven back up. Wow, that's clean. That is clean as a pen. That's probably 55,000 miles. There's still paint on the We strings. have oil up here already. I think, uh, I think we just got a letter. Let her take some temperature, maybe. Dad's got the belt on for the generator, and I checked these and they're tight. So that means they're bottomed out. And I guess they were riding around with it like that, because that hadn't, well, I say that doesn't look new, but I mean, new is what, 20 something years ago. So <laughs> it could have been new. Doubtful though. It looks like they rode around like that. I did go ahead and pull the other valve cover off so we can verify we have good flow. I think we probably just need a little bit of run time to let those lifters pick up. We're going to go ahead and just put water in it to begin with. Hopefully it has something. I don't have, there's nothing in the top holding tank here. We'll go ahead and fill it up. We have the belt on there. We can give it a little bit more run time. Hopefully everything will clear up and maybe those lifters will pick back up. It only took a little over a gallon. It probably had something in it. It had to. Well, Hopefully it was coolant. <laughs> well, if it's not frozen, being in North Carolina, it was probably coolant. It looks like it, it's been on there a long time, but it was probably a replacement. It's definitely not the original. Maybe they, uh, maybe they installed the wrong bolts or maybe the depth was different. They ran on it. Don't know how. Go ahead. Wow, my blood. Get better. Okay, maybe it was the fuel pump then. Crank it again. I don't know. I heard it. No. I think that lifter. I don't think crank, that. crank it. Cut it. Run it for a couple seconds. Cut it off. Crank it. Run it for a couple seconds. Uh oh. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Just like it. Yep. It's bound again. What in the world? Got the starter. I mean, it's completely bound. I guess we need to pull that starter and take a look at that Bendix, maybe. Well, it's definitely a runner and the lifter started clearing up that last time we tried to start it. It seems like whatever that issue was with the motor being locked down in the first place, probably the reason it was parked was actually something to do with the Bendix in that starter. 
And so we're gonna jack it up really quick. Let's pull that starter, take a look at it and see if we can figure out what's going on. I have a feeling the spring's probably coming apart or something. Maybe it's got some shaft play and it's binding in place, but let's pull it. Let's see what's going on there. Get that fixed, get it back in there. Cause I wanna run this thing some more. Okay, just kidding. We rocked it around a bit. Uh, we're still gonna have to pull that starter, but let's crank it back again. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't bind up completely. Oh boy. It seems like it's just when it's starting. It doesn't, it doesn't stay engaged or anything. Go ahead. Just a couple little blippies. Well, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. First of next, we'll probably go ahead and pull that starter and see if we can figure out what's going on there. We're going to have to pull that water pump. Probably go through the cooling system a little bit. Let's give this thing some more runtime. I think we start working on the brakes and we see if we can take this thing for its first drive. That 390 fired up after sitting for, four, for 24 years. Did have some lifter issues, but you heard those start clearing up and it, it's super smooth, super quiet, surprisingly sits there and idles. Timing's probably a little bit off. I can't get the idle to drop all the way down. So there is some things that have been messed with that we need to try to kind of figure out and dial in. We'll dial it in and once we get it on the road, we get some wheels and tires on it. I think we wet sand this, buff it, wax it, pull the interior apart, throw some new carpet in it, and do a full detail of this car, because I'll be quite honest, the original purpose for buying this car, ooh, thunderstorm are coming, was to pull that 390 out of it. I hate to say that. It looked really rough, especially in pictures when we were buying it in the auction. We got it fairly reasonable, especially for a big block car. This one's way too nice to sit, to not, to, this one's way too nice to not save. So we definitely have to save it. Go down in that comment section. Let me know what you guys think of the car, some things that maybe we could do with the car here in the short future. But if you're enjoying what we're doing and you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell to keep up with our uploads on things like this car, or other rescues, our rebuilds, restorations, and the fun that we have with our weird quirky cars. If you are a subscriber, we really do appreciate all the love and support. It gives us the ability to rescue these old cars and we have such a fun time doing it. But that's gonna wrap it up. Peace out and catch you all on the flip side. <laughs>